You know, a dad wants a daughter who's going to be loved and honored and respected. And Ruth and I, like the first time we met you, Kurt, you know, there's the door shuts, you say goodbye to Kurt, and then it's like, Ruth, what do you think of this guy? I love him. Me too. And in the fall, I think of pumpkin spice latte and drinking coffee with my girl, Betsy. And so somehow we established this relationship every Wednesday, like at five o'clock, meet at Starbucks. And I figured, I was kind of doing the math on this, but I think you and I, we consumed over 12,152 fluid ounces of dark roast coffee and matcha green tea lattes together. Whoa, man, it was so good. You'd just be like, Dad, what do you think of this photograph? This one or this one? And I would say like intelligent things like, ah, this one seems kind of like uh, too much light. I like the one with more shadow. And, and you'd be like, yeah, I do. I agree with you. You know, and then I remember this one time, Betsy, where you just said, man, I want to get together with God. That's important to me. So you, you had your Bible and you had your journal and you went to the Racine Beach and just sat on a dock and I asked you about it and you just and you just said like yeah that was that was awesome like I heard from God I got some encouragement I got some vision like the first commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind like that that was important to you that's something that you really are like yes I want to pursue God in my life and I also want to think of people as more important than myself Kurt, you know, I, I do believe that about you as well, that you, you want to um, seek God and his kingdom more than anything else. One night during quarantine with this whole COVID thing, Kurt um, was asked if he had to either give up dating Betsy or fishing for the rest of his life, which would he give up? But without even a pause, Kurt said that he would give up fishing. Yeah, it's true. And you know, that is when I knew that this was serious. That's when I knew this was serious. When I knew that Kurt had finally found a, a love that was stronger than his love for fishing, I knew that he was hooked. She has such a genuine love for people in her life. She genuinely cares about her friendships, people that she's close to, but also people that she doesn't know at all. And she is quiet, <laughs> but she's not just quiet. She's also gentle and humble. Betsy views everything in her life as a privilege and an honor. Even this weekend, you know, she's like, everything has to change and it's kind of crazy, but everything, you know, me and Kurt are gonna get married and everything on top of that is an extra blessing. And it's just a really cool attitude of humility that Betsy carries in throughout her life. Uh, Jesus in Luke 12 talks about a rich man who stores up treasures for himself. He's got a warehouse full of, of riches and he's planned out his entire life. But then Jesus uh, warns his listeners in verses 21 and 22. He says, to the man that stored up these riches, this very night your life will be demanded from you. And then who will get what you've prepared for yourself? This is how it will be for anyone who stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. And I just want to say, Kurt, you are a man who's learned to be rich towards God. You've planned out so many things. You've been willing to change along the way. And I think life will continue to take you on directions that you don't expect. But as long as you keep God in the center, man, like your ability to plan is awesome, but God's ability to, to see your future is so much better. That's why I'm so confident that you guys are going to have a great marriage is because Betsy is the same way. And everything that I, I know about you and have seen and heard is that you're somebody who's really committed to living out uh, these things that you believe about God and, uh, and living a life of sacrifice for others. And if you guys have that toward each other, then no matter what kinds of uh, challenges come your way, like uh, that's going to see you through and you're going to have an awesome marriage. You're someone who doesn't pretend to be more than who you are. I really appreciate like that humble attitude about you. And you've pushed yourself to pursue what's most important in life, which is uh, that relationship with God, responding to his call. I think what I'm most excited for in all this is for her to have a partner to always lean on, uh, someone who has strengths or she has weaknesses, and for her to feel lifted up in her strengths too. I'm just, I'm confident in your guys' marriage, not because 
you two are just incredible people, but because you trust in an incredible God, you know, like Proverbs 3, that you trust in the Lord with all your heart. You don't lean on your own understanding. And so, um, you know, based on that verse, God is going to make your paths straight. I do commit myself to you and only you after God. I do want to develop a godly marriage with you and commit our marriage to God. I do not want our marriage to be defined as living parallel lives. I do want to learn how to love you with God's love, love that moves towards you even when I feel wronged, even when I feel hurt in our relationship. Because as Kevin was just saying, that's the love that God has given us. We have turned on Him, but He has still moved towards us. And I want to learn how to do that in our marriage with you. I do want to get you a cute little kitten that'll grow up to be a nice, plump, pot-bellied cat. I do want to help you catch more fish. I don't ever want to stop dating you. I do want to keep exploring exotic foods with you. Eel sushi and octopus meatballs is just the start. I don't ever want to stop trying to understand you. I do want to be your all-time model for photography. I do want to challenge you to be more assertive and loving others. I do want to pursue the good things God has planned in advance for us together. I do want our marriage to make an impact in this world and the next, to help others, to live for others. I do want to learn to depend on God together as we navigate this life through the joys and the sufferings. And I do want to take joy in the good things that God will give us and others. Betsy, I love you, and I'm excited to navigate this life with you in preparation for the next. You're no longer me Prometita, but you'll always be me and more. First and foremost, I promise to be your forever fishing buddy. Yes. Whatever you catch for fun or make for dinner, I'm all in. I promise to regularly pursue my relationship with God and continuously seek to love you with His unconditional love. I promise to communicate my honest thoughts with you, rather than holding them in and withdrawing. I promise to apologize for my wrongs, and to generously give you forgiveness because of Jesus Christ completely forgiving us. I promise to show you respect by listening and seeking to understand you, your thoughts and your ideas. I promise to be generous with our money, giving a lot to the people in need. I promise to regularly open up our home to our family and our friends. I promise not to hold you to the expectation of loving me perfectly, since my true rock for love and security comes from God. I promise to stay committed to you and only you. And finally, I promise to be your forever teammate in times of hardship as well as joyous occasions. I am so grateful to become your wife today. I love you. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? God saw our need and decided, I'm going to solve their problem for them. He set aside his comfort and sent his son down here on our behalf. We also see from this verse continual commitment. He says, how will he not also give? It's not a one-time thing. God doesn't love us one time and forget about us. It's a continual commitment to give. And standing here, many people will see marriage as a finish line, but it is the greatest starting line to the greatest adventure, the greatest opportunity to continue to love one another and grow together. It says he graciously gives. And I think this is the most important part out of all of this, that grace, that word, means unmerited favor. You know, it's not just that Jesus came and died. He didn't die for those that earned it. He didn't die for those that did enough good things in their life. He died for all of us, despite who we are, our broken, sinful selves. And we all have an opportunity at one point in our life to turn to God and ask for that forgiveness, not based on who we are, 
but based on who God is and His love to have that forgiveness apply to our lives. And I know Kurt and Betsy see that as the cornerstone of their marriage, that they understand God's forgiveness and His abundant, gracious love for us. And they wanted you to know that you could have that relationship with God based on that forgiveness today by just asking Him for it in your heart. All and say-